good has it worked out for you in the damn past when you've gone, woo woo, I'm gonna start a new diet, I'm gonna start a new plan, it's gonna be fucking amazing. And you wipe the slate clean, you throw out every skerrick of junk food from the house, you're like dialing fucking Weight Watchers and it's gonna be fabulous and Jenny Craig's on the phone and it's amazing, right? And you're thinking, this is gonna work for sure. I bought a treadmill, I bought a treadmill. My mindset will change now because I bought a treadmill. <sighs> Did you have a fucking lobotomy? Because if you didn't, the $2,000 that you spent on a treadmill hasn't changed your mindset, hasn't changed the way you think. Hey girl, I'm Kylie Pax. After a lifetime of emotional eating, struggling with my weight and being a cereal dieter, I finally found the missing key to weight loss and I lost 20 kilos. Each week, I'll give you my no BS weight loss advice so you can sprinkle it over your life and your dinner plate and lose weight too. Everything I teach you is fluff free. That means you'll learn simple strategies to master not only your weight, but your mindset as well. Girl, you get that in check and those extra kilos will never haunt your booty again. If you're ready to lose the weight for life, let's go. What is up, my gorgeous, fabulous creatures? You have landed and arrived in episode number 53 of the No BS Weight Loss Podcast. This week we are talking about the key habits that you need to have if you want to lose the damn weight. Now, let's just start today's episode. First of all, I just want to point out, if you're not watching me on YouTube, honey, you're missing an extravaganza of fashion fabulosity. Let me just say, I have this amazing pink fluffy top, the ripped jeans, like I'm feeling the vibe today and like huge kind of hoop earrings. So I just want to tell you how vibey the vibe is today. But as we move on, <laughs> refocus, kind of refocus. Many of us, so many of us, me included, use our weight as an excuse to avoid shit in our lives, to avoid doing things, to avoid engaging in things, to avoid attending things, to avoid just everything in our lives. Some of the things I used to use my weight to avoid included uh, getting a job. Oh my God, people, please. I was actually offered a really cool job at one time, but I didn't take it. I declined the job, even though, wait, wait. I was unemployed and needed the money. Uh, please, what kind of an idiot was I? I was unemployed and needed the money, but I declined the job because I was at home at the time and I had really great control over my weight loss regimen that I was using at that time. And I was finally starting to see some weight loss. And I was scared that if I got my damn ass into an office environment, uh, I would not be able to control myself around the snacks and the snack bars and being around other people and what they were gonna offer me. So I said no to a job straight up. The second thing, and well, it's not even the second thing, but another reason that we often will use our weight to avoid things in our lives, it's just a preamble here, like let's, uh, let's be clear, is we very often don't dress how we want. So as you hear me saying earlier about how fabulous I look today, please, if you're not watching me on YouTube, you better scoot right on over there and leave a comment, leave a like and leave a comment, honey, please, you know, at least show me, show me some support. I use my weight as a way to avoid dressing in a way that I liked. I just want to, I'm just giving myself like the massive face palm right here. I'm dressed today in a way that makes me feel good, makes me feel alive, makes me feel vibrant. But can I just say, I by no means have some amazing fucking Victoria's Secret body that could, should potentially be pulling off this look. But I don't give a fuck. This makes me feel fantastic. So I damn well put it on and I wear it and I strut my ass like I own that shit. Another thing that we really often use our weight to avoid in our lives is finding a partner. Oh, oh, please. How many of you all out there are like, can't find a man right now, can't, I need to lose weight first. Can't find a partner, can't find a woman right now, I need to lose weight first. Because the thought underneath is, who's gonna want me like this? Who's gonna want me like this? What the fuck kind of thinking is that? Can I tell you what's sexy? Not the size on your damn jeans. Not the fluffy fucking pink top. None of that is what's sexy. What's sexy is your confidence and the way you strut it. That is what is sexy. Listen, I fell in love with my current partner, who I, who I love to the ends of the earth and back, because he was so damn confident. That confidence is what attracted me. Uh, listen, I think he's the best looking thing since sliced bread, but you probably all may not. Well, I hope you don't, because then you're all gonna come after my man. <laughs> but that's how it is. There can be some extremely uh, attractive you know, people on the planet, but you don't find them attractive because you're just wired in a different way. Now, Phil, my partner, who I love to the ends of the earth and back, I fell in love with him and found his confidence sexy as fuck. 
And that's what led me to sort of go on a date with him and so on. It's not, it wasn't because he has a ripped body, which he actually does, but that wasn't it. That literally wasn't it. He was so confident in himself, who he was, what he wanted and where he was going, which is something we're going to talk about today, that I thought there was a magnetism around about him. And I thought I need to be in his world. I didn't care in what capacity, quite frankly. I just knew I needed to be in his world. So what we're going to talk about today is some of the non-negotiables when it comes to, well, three actually of the main ones, non-negotiables when it comes to you actually being successful in your weight loss. And the first one is you establishing some non-negotiable fucking routines. Now, what? here's what I mean by that. First up, we're going to talk a little bit about self-talk today, but first up, I really want you to start arguing for what you can achieve and what you can do rather than what you can't. I can't do that right now because the kids are home. I can't do that right now because the kids are going back to school. Can't do that right now because I'm too overweight. I can't do that right now because I am in the middle of a diet. I can't do that right now. I fill in the fucking blank. That is what we tell ourselves. I want you to flip that because every coin has a flip side, honey, please. Every coin has a flip side. You're looking at one side of that damn coin. I want you to flip it. And what's on the other side? I can do that now because, and give me 50. Listen, for every 10 reasons why you tell me you can't do something, I can give you 15 reasons why you fucking well can. And you know it too. But it's easier for you to back away and pretend that these are valid fucking reasons for you putting your life on hold. I don't think so, my friend. I don't think so. So one of the main things you can do when it comes to establishing some non-negotiable routines is set a minimum baseline for yourself. Now, your baseline is something I talk about in my F for Scale course with the girls. We talk about having a minimum baseline all the fucking time. What is a baseline? Okay, let's let's start at the beginning. A baseline is if you have you being fabulous and excellent up here and you being a lazy ass slob down here, your baseline is the minimum standard that you will not go below. And I want you to set it somewhere in the middle. Your baseline should not be you being a lazy ass slob down the bottom. That's not the fucking baseline. We're shifting the baseline to the middle and that you do not go below. So that's going to look like you getting up when your alarm goes off at seven in the morning, you don't hit the fucking snooze button. What the fuck is that? You get your ass up. Can I just tell you something right now about alarms? This is so fucking important. Your bed where you sleep at night is your comfort zone. I want you to think about your bed as your comfort zone. That is you, cozy, cozy, snuggly, warm. It's fabulous in your fucking bed. There you are with your fluffy doona and life is great. Until that damn alarm goes off and then how good is your life? Your life sucks because you've got to get out of bed. But here's what I want to tell you. If you hit that snooze button, you can pretty much guarantee how the rest of your day is going to roll out. You can see it right then and there. The rest of the day is going to be like, I don't want to do this. Like, here we go again. This is so hard. Life is so hard. Weight loss is so hard. Why do I have to eat this shit? I just want the Mars bar. Like, just give me the Hungry Jacks. Give me the McDonald's or what fucking ever. And there you are making excuses and it all started way back at 7 a.m. that morning when your alarm went off and you didn't have the balls to get up and start moving in your day. You sat there like a like a lazy ass person and just went, I'll just hit the snooze button again. I'll just put my life on hold so I can stay here in my comfort zone a little bit longer. It's time to get out of your damn comfort zone, people. Let me tell you something now. If you're going to spend your life in your comfort zone, Get fucking ready to be dissatisfied from now until the end of your days. Oh, I'm just going to tell you how it fucking well is. Get ready to be dissatisfied from now until the end of your days. If you're going to sit in your comfort zone and think, think for one second that something magical is going to happen and you're magically going to lose weight and somehow fucking pixies are going to come and deliver you a weight loss plan that you will be able to do with no struggle and no and fucking double door will come and ding you on the head with harry potter and you'll be skinny and amazing tomorrow because you slept in till 7 30 in the morning they have to scramble and get to work no oh no my friend that is not how it works you've got to get your damn ass up 
This is why it's so important to get up when your alarm goes off and preferably fucking before because you need to tell yourself, your brain, you need to tell your damn self that I do not compromise. I am not a woman of compromise. I don't fuck with myself. When I say I'm going to do something, I fucking will do it. I get my ass up and I do that shit. Not only do I do it, I do it well. I do it properly. I do it more than I expected to do. That's what your baseline is about. Now, the next part, now that we've had that little rampage, the next part of you setting up a baseline routine system is you implementing changes one at a time, people, not all at once, one at a fucking time. How good has it worked out for you in the damn past when you've gone, woo, -woo I'm going to start a new diet, I'm going to start a new plan, it's going to be fucking amazing, and you wipe the slate clean, you throw out every skerrick of junk food from the house, you're like, dialing fucking Weight Watchers, and it's going to be fabulous, and Jenny Craig's on the phone, and fucking, it's amazing, right? And you're thinking, this is going to work for sure, I bought a treadmill, I bought a treadmill, my mindset will change now because I bought a treadmill. <sighs> Did you have a fucking lobotomy? Because if you didn't, the $2,000 that you spent on a treadmill hasn't changed your mindset, hasn't changed the way you think. Uh, no, the treadmill that you just invested two grand in is now sitting in your garage, probably still not assembled, mind you. I don't know how you operate. I've got you. I know you. I see you. I fucking know you. I am you. I know what happens. You buy some expensive ass piece of exercise equipment and then think this will motivate me to change. It's not going to motivate nothing. So the money ain't nothing. The two grand that you just blew on the treadmill would have been better off spent in you investing in a mindset program, joining F to scale, not that it's two, not that it's two grand, but joining my program or getting a mindset coach or doing fucking something that's going to change where the problem actually resides, which is up here, up here. For those of you that are listening and not watching, I'm pointing to your cranium or your mind. So implement your changes one at a time. Don't freak yourself out by doing 10,000, thinking, thinking for one second that you can implement 10,000 changes in your life and your brain isn't going to freak out. You're not going to have some freak out reaction and find yourself at the drive through as if you're not going to. Like that's just so utterly ridiculous. Invest in yourself by implementing your changes one at a time. Get that shit down before you try and start doing the next thing. Please, do it properly. Like I said, be a woman of integrity. Get the first thing right before you start trying to slam on and sandwich in a second thing. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you about in implementing these baselines is make sure that if you're going to stop doing something shit, like, okay, I'm going to stop sitting at night in front of the TV and just stuffing my face with Oreos. I'm going to stop doing that. It's fantastic. I'm cheering you on with the fucking clapping hand emojis. But honey, what are you going to do instead? You can't just create an empty space and think that something isn't going to come to fill it. That is not a thing. You need to, if you're going to clean something out, you better put something good in its place on purpose. If you don't purposely put something good in its place, or oh, something will come to fill it, something always comes to fill an empty space. Please tell me how many times have you cleaned up the whole house and then someone in the family comes and on a nice clean bench where you've just scrubbed and polished and put everything away, they dump their dirty ass shit down on your bench. Empty space will always be filled. If you're going to take something out of your life, like munching on Oreos all night long, then you better purposely choose to put something good, new and good in its place. What could that be? Taking a fucking walk around the block, texting with friends, journaling, meditating, working on your mindset. There's 10 things for you right away. The last thing I want to say to you about this point is let's stop bullshitting ourselves. Time is not the problem. How often do you find yourself there? I don't have time. Can't do that now. Don't have time. Can't do that now. Oh, I, I can't do the treadmill this morning. I don't have time. Your $2,000 treadmill and all of a sudden now you've assembled it, but now you don't have time. Can't do that. Of course you don't have fucking time because you slept in past your alarm as per point B, a little further back. Don't have time. Time is never the issue. Time's not the issue. We make time for the things that matter. Do you make time to brush your teeth before you leave house in the morning? Yeah, of course you fucking do because you don't want to talk to your boss with uh, ginger fucking virus breath. Right? We make time for the things that matter. Do you shower? Of course you do. It matters. Do you find time to buy the Oreos? Yeah, you fucking do because it matters to you. So yes, you have got time for the things that matter. Reschedule your shit, move it around in your calendar and slot in what is important to you. The second point that I want to bring to you today. So after we've gone, set your minimum fucking baseline in your routines, create some rock solid routines. 
is this. Stop subscribing to BS thoughts, feelings, and actions. What does that look like? Anyone that is not going in your direction, they're out of here. Your biggest problem right now is not necessarily the people, places, things in your external environment. Whilst it may have a minor influence and impact on the decisions you make, at the end of the day, obviously, your decisions are all coming from you. And your biggest issue will always be, always, the voice in your head. We talk about the voice in your head all the time. Again, as I say, in my program, F The Scale, you can find out more about this at kyliepacks.com forward slash F The Scale. In F The Scale, we talk about the voice. Let me backtrack a little. What is the fucking voice? The voice is that voice in your head that is like, uh, that is exactly as we said, can't do that, don't have time, can't do that, I'm too overweight, can't do that, that's uncomfortable. That's the voice. Here's a perfect example of how the voice will fuck you over every time. The voice is that voice in your head that at the end of a long work day, a long shit work day, by the way, will say to you, just get the Maccas, just go through the drive through you deserve it. And you're like, yeah, I do deserve it. My boss was an asshole today. I do deserve it. I'm going to go through Maccas. And you do. And you get your super-sized fucking fun meals and all the shit that you get. And then you bring it home, you eat it, maybe you eat it in the car. Let me tell you something right now. That voice... The same damn voice. The minute, the last greasy fly, fry, fry, the last greasy fry, fry. Okay, the burger, the greasy burger. The minute that last juicy piece of burger has passed your lips, it's the same damn voice that is all up in your grill. I cannot believe what you have just done. I cannot believe what a fat pig you are, you fat, disgusting hoe. This is what my voice says to me anyway. You piece of shit. You are never going to lose weight. You're never going to get thin. What do you think you're even, why are you even bothering? Let me just remind you, honey, this was the same voice that two seconds ago told you that eating that whole entire meal was the best idea you've ever had. That voice is completely fucked. You cannot listen to that voice. It cannot be trusted. It cannot be trusted, which is why, as per our first point, you need rock solid routines and a baseline that you can rely on so that you don't get screwed over by the voice that will connive its way around. Eat those Oreos, honey. There's only a few left. Just have those last few. It doesn't matter. And the minute, the minute you finish them, oh, you disgusting pig. Look at you. I can see the extra rolls on your stomach already. Oh, you're so disgusting. You should go weigh yourself right now. I bet you've gained weight already. Oh, you're useless. It's the same voice. How can this even be? I'm not going to talk to you today about the different parts of our brain. We can go into that in a different episode, but I swear to you, this voice cannot be trusted. For the purposes of what we're talking about today, you have got to have some minimum baselines and rock solid routines set so that when it gets to the end of the day, when you're tired, when you're super like hangry and you're too like pissed to make really good food decisions, you've already got a rock solid routine and a minimum baseline that you will not scooch below. Now, the third and final point that I want to bring you today for this one, this one's episode, for today's episode is you need to listen when all else fails, honeys. You have got to decide who the fuck you want to be in this world, in this life, in this opportunity that you have. <sighs> Honey, let me tell you, I'm 50 now. Do you think that I am so fucking delusional that I think I've got a shit ton of time left? I don't have a shit ton of time left. If I want the things that I want, I'm going to have to move my ass at an, at an expedited pace. <laughs> Because the time that I thought I had, what is it, when I was really, in my 20s, I didn't even give a shit about time. I wasn't thinking about time. I just thought I would live forever. In my 30s, I really thought I had a lot of time. In my 40s, I was <laughs> traumatized because I was going through, because I was in my 40s and I was going through divorce and like fucking and all kinds of nasty ass shit. And I just, it was, just wasn't the priority. It wasn't the focus. But as I hit now 50, I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> There isn't all the time in the world. And the things that I thought would potentially have happened by now, some of them haven't. Some of them have. It's great. I've worked my ass off. They have happened. But others, not so much. Not so fucking much. And I don't have as much time as I have now. Let me tell you something. Uh, let's say I have another 50 years. That's, that's awesome. Yay. Again, with the clapping hand emojis. It's fucking amazing. But 50 years of how much of that will I be in good health, strong enough, mentally strong enough, emotionally strong enough, like 
healthy and fit enough to really go for the goals that I want. You take that shit seriously, now you could be down to potentially another 25, 30 years. Now we're not talking very fucking long. Your job here is not to put shit on yourself all day long. You cannot, nobody has ever motiv motivated themselves by talking shit about themselves. Never. Ne that is just literally not a thing. You cannot tell yourself how fat and ugly you are so much and enough that you will magically wake up and go, oh, I'm so excited to change. Can't wait. Feel like it. Really feel the vibe to change because you told yourself that you're a fat, disgusting pig. That is not a thing, honey. The number one kindest thing that you can do for yourself is talk nice to yourself. And then after you've spoken to yourself really nice and given yourself a little warm, cozy hug, then you need to smack your ass in shape and say, listen, now that I have established that I love you, I tell you in love, it's time for us to move. It is time for us to move. And if this is something that resonates with you, my free course is going to completely blow you out the water. If you pop on over there, I will put the link below. Head on over to kyliepacks.com forward slash free course. Free course. I tell you everything that I did to lose 20 kilos and fucking keep that shit off because it pissed me off so much my whole life. I, I struggled with that shit for 30 years. That emotional eating, like all of that shit was my arch nemesis for 30 years. So if you think I don't know what I'm talking about, you're wrong. I'm just telling you because I do. So head on over to kyliepacks.com forward slash free course, link below. And if you have any questions, anything you want to know, please, of course, feel free to ask me. I'm very approachable. Despite the aggression that I sort of spat your way today, I am a very approachable girl. I'm sending you huge amounts of love. If you have any questions, any comments, anything that you want to know for future episodes, please throw them below. I am extremely interactive. And as always, as always, Please do remember, the only person who can change your damn life is you. When you step up, create some minimum baselines, set some strong ass routines, stop talking to yourself like a muppet, that is when you really can have everything that you want and you've got what it takes. I'm sending you tremendous amounts of love. I will see you again next week. Until then, my gorgeous ones, bye for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to shimmy your butt over to kyliepacks.com forward slash free course and sign up for my free weight loss training so you can start losing your weight now. You'll also find helpful notes and resources in my past podcast that will help you lose your weight without the BS diet drama. I'll see you next week.